Welcome to the lecture series of basic electrical engineering. Uh, we are seeing the module 4 that is electrical utilities and production. And that today we are going to see about the energy audit and energy conservation. So in this, so what is meant by energy conservation? I think you might have studied in your smaller classes how to consume energy, where to consume energy, what are the various factors are there uh, for consuming energy. So many we might have seen that and audit that is a new word maybe but it is nothing but an analysis of how we are using the uh, electrical energy so this is about the uh, topic today so first we should know the basic forms i think we might have studied this in the previous uh, uh, lecture itself so here the energy is nothing but a capacity of the physical system to perform work so energy exists in several forms such as heat, kinetic, mechanical, light, potential and other forms also. So according to law of conservation of energy, the total energy remains system though may transform from one form to other. So we, we might have studied this example also when two billiards ball or colliding so may come to rest when the resulting energy is converted to sound and perhaps little bit of friction on it due to the collision. So, we, uh, so this is the best example of the energy and many we can say carom coins, uh, we push a book, uh, so we push a door, so many are there. Here what are the type of energy? Mechanical energy. So what is meant by mechanical energy? We are going to have a just recap of it. I think we might have studied this in smaller classes in physics and we may be studied uh, in some other uh, subjects also as application based. Here we are going to study about, just we are going to have a recap of it. So here mechanical energy, the mechanical energy is the result of moment of object from one point to other point. The mechanical energy is sum of kinetic energy and the potential energy. So this is very, very important. Then thermal energy. So it is nothing but heat energy ref uh, which reflects the temperature difference between two systems. So this is also we made a study. Then nuclear energy is resulting in the changes in the atomic nuclei. So when the automatic nuclear is fission or fusion, I think in the previous uh, topic we might have studied about various type of power station in that one station we might have studied nuclear power station if there nuclear fusion or nuclear fission will happen so that we will get amount of energy and then chemical energy due to same atoms or molecules uh, and the electrochemical combination also will get some you know, chemical energy and then electromagnetic energy that we are already studying. So we are seeing also what are the mobile you are using, same electromagnetic waves. So that is also a type of energy. So in under the world energy conception uh, for human civilization, it involves energy harnessed from energy source and applied towards humanity's endeavors according to every industrial and technic technological sector across the country. Here you can see how the energy, total energy consumption uh, of the world. Here you can see world energy consumption. So it is energy in ton watt hour per year, and it is from the here. You can see uh, it's actually 2015's database. So here you can see that impact everywhere it is increasing oil, coal, natural gas, hydro, and also there is a drop in this one that is a nuclear uh, because it is risky to use uh, and uh, renewable. Renewable is getting picked up after 1990s. Now it is having more impact and the government also is giving more uh, incentive for that. So that is the world's uh, energy consumption. In uh, India's energy consumption, uh, total install capacity is 39, sorry, 319.60 gigawatt as 2017 database and uh, generated by utilities in India is uh, uh, 1116.84 ton watt hour. So here India is the largest world's uh, largest third producer and fourth largest consumer of electricity. So it has the highest record. So it is as per 2015-16 database. So our per capita energy consumption is low compared to the other countries we, because we are uh, getting less tariff that is cheaper energy per unit consumption is very cheap in India. So these are all the various uh, sources of energy in that I think we might have studied this in detail in the previous uh, topic itself. 
that is uh, generation of electricity so we told already we are now also relying on coal more on coal and the next one may be the hydro it is a large hydro but it is seasonal quite seasonal then remaining on all it is at very less rate so wind power is now it is getting boomed but it is also seasonal solar it is also seasonal but it is a renewable anyway we can compensate by means of hybrid systems so this is the total amount of energy generated now we are going to talk about the energy conservation so what is meant by energy conservation so our objective of energy management that we are going to see so the fundamental goal of energy management is to produce goods and provide services with least cost and least environmental effect so with less cost and less impact of the environment we should get some energy so that is known as the uh, energy management in other words it is judicious and effective use of energy to maximize the profit and enhance the competitive positions or one more uh, uh, definition also there so optimizing the energy using the energy in optimal manner and uh, reduce the energy requirement as per the unit output and uh, reducing the cost total cost that is also is included in the energy management so it is a sub topic in the energy conservation so what is the objective of energy management to achieve and maintain optimum energy and procurement and utilization throughout the organization second one is the minimization of the energy cost without affecting the production quality third one is to minimize the environmental effects next we are going to talk about the energy audit this is the key systematic approach for decision making in the area of management to balance the total uh, energy inputs with the in use so to identify all the energy streams in the facility this quantifies the energy usage according to its discrete function for example industrial audit is fundamental for that uh, so that energy audit is in in general what is its definition proper definition is verification monitoring and analysis of use of energy including submission of technical report containing the recommendation for improving the energy efficiency with cost benefit analysis and action plan to reduce the energy consumption so here the primary objective is to reduce the energy consumption per unit and lower the operating cost and it should have a reference point for managing that so we should plan according to this one so what is meant by energy conservation or uh, energy saving so what what does it mean so i think we might have learned uh, we might have heard about bachat uh, lamp yojana that is bly so here they told to shift to this one so that is replace the incandescent lamp with the cfl compact fluorescent lamp that is in the 2012 so here what they told the aims to large scale replacement of inefficient incandescent lamp because this incandescent lamp produces both heat and light due to heat more energy will be consumed but this one emits only light so they want to replace it so uh, to recover from it and we can the this plan was executed in 2012 as per the bureau of electrical energy in 2012 and they got the achievement also now almost many people are not using this lamps and we we should not uh, use this also for saving power at home so this can be done at our home next one is uh, where various type of organizations what we are uh, utilizing or based on the energy conservation matters i think we might have heard about this word be reduce bureau of electrical energy we have to energy is life we have to conserve it and el el is nothing but energy efficiency services limited so it is under the ministry of power then this is the energy star recently we are uh, utilizing this stars so energy saving sh- should be achieved during the uh, 11 uh, plan period so here you can see see that uh, how the lighting comparison chart so now previously in 2012 they told to go shift from incandescent lamp to cfl lamp but rather than that we have found the led lamp which is more uh, energy efficient here you can see here 
for example if a 40 watt incandescent lamp if you use it produces 450 lumens same uh, we can go for halogen lamp halogen incandescent also it is 29 watt the same lumens for cfl it is just a 10 watt for led lamps it's just a 5 watts and similarly for 800 lumens for incandescent we have to go for 60 and for cfl it is just 13 led is just 10 and for 75 watts you should go for 53 halogen and 16 cfl and 15 led watts and for is 100 watt for this is the standard one i think for more brightness we may be using so it produces uh, uh, 1600 lumens so lumens is nothing but light brightness so it is more if more uh, light will be there brightness here less brightness will be there so for this if you are looking for 100 watt lamp instead of that we can replace with 72 watts of incandescent lamp and 20 watts of cfl either 19 watts of uh, led so here lifetime matters so all the incandescent lamp because it is uh, the tungsten element uh, there is a possibility of breaking of that element so it is lifetime is just one year and it's uh, halogen lamp is one to two year because it is also based on uh, halogens tungsten and here it is cfl is basically 10 years you can get the lifetime and this may be uh, 25 plus years 15 to 25 plus years will be the efficiency of the led lamp so it is more efficient and more lifetime is there and also for more lumens also we can go for maximum 19 watts so this is the achievement of the lighting energy efficiency and similarly we can go for the energy conservation act so government has an energy conservation act for legal framework and arrangement we should have some regulations in that uh, they have created a bureau of uh, energy efficiency be a nodal agency center and a state uh, designated agency sdas to uh, implement the act so under the act the, we have to save the energy the major role is they have to save the energy under the mission of b e development policy based on the self-regulation market principles goal of reducing the energy intensity of Indian economy so what are the silent factors so to facilitate and enforce the efficient use of energy and its conservation notify the energy incentive industries establishments commercial buildings as designated consumers and prescribe energy consumption norms and standard for the designated consumers so this is the energy conservation act this was established on 2001 so it has some uh, key uh, defined outlines so building building means erection is a part it, it, it is it, it recommends that it should have 100 kilowatts uh, demand and 120 volt ampere uh, so they they put this category and designated agency so this agency which coordinates the regulates and enforces the provisions within the state and designated consumer so proper consumer uh, of class of users and schedule the specified uh, energy in initiative uh, industries of the consumers the energy energy means from which uh, form the energy is derived fossil fuels or nuclear substance or hydroelectricity or uh, renewable so this has to be notified and the energy audit so verification and monitoring should be done with proper technical reports that is also come under this key and outline of this act so it has some four uh, uh, energy conservation codes that is ecbc it means the norms and standards of energy consumption expressed in terms of uh, per square meter of area where the energy used and includes the location of the building so ecbc code uh, derives where what type of lighting you are using what is required per square feet so they will give that idea regarding that and the energy consumption standard is a process of energy uh, some standard they may fix according to that uh, you should follow the codes and the energy saving certificate so some certificates they will be giving for your uh, useful uh, application for example star rating certificate is one of the best example 
and in case of equipment or appliances uh, generates transmits include all device so that is also coming under this work first one is the be so this is a definite standard government agency so it was created in 2002 after the energy conservation act so its major role is to develop the programs will increase which will increase the conservation of energy efficient use of uh, energy in india and mandatory for certain appliances for certain appliances this is very 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 important that is from january 2010 so here as i told uh, the schemes under b double e that is b double e uh, energy conservation act 2001 as ecbc code standards and labeling demand side management bachat lamp yojana promoting energy efficient in small and medium enterprises and designated consumers certification of energy auditors and energy management so these key factors coming under this energy conservation act so ecbc is a deal uh, that is producing here you can see the ecbc codes uh, it's a minimum energy efficiency standards for design and construction of the commercial building so it encourages the buildings design for example the what is the building function what is the comfort health productivity they are they are all considered under life cycle cost also consider as the energy cons uh, consumption is minimized so here they are going to see a building a square meter area taken into consider and climatic region of the country they are taking and where the building is located they are uh, having analysis and uh, uh, what are the standards they can follow so they will give some norms based on that we have to uh, construct that building so we will follow this code the second one is standards and labeling here you can see so here you can have the star labels various type of star rating so standards and labeling based on this star rating we have to purchase the uh, equipment so if the star rating is more if the five star rating is there we have to go for that so this also gives the energy efficient we are uh, making it for the easy understanding of the people so do you all don't also to prevent the uh, misuse of uh, non uh, efficient equipments so th- for that purpose this information is shared among the consumers uh, here you can see five star rating as i told already it is a four star five star and here you are giving all the per unit uh, all the details about this equipment so what is the power saving guide so this is also mandatory how long it will come uh what is the tar rating it, it may be i think you might have noticed this in the refrigerators washing machines televisions everywhere you can see that so this is mandatory for all indian products and this one we discussed already I want to come from uh incandescent lamp too so this was achieved this is the old one we this uh, this was achieved and it is now we are switching from this one to led lamps demand side management so next topic is the demand side management is managing a demand for power by the utilities and distribution com- companies uh, among some on all consumer with the current and future needs so we have to plan the demand side so if you are lagging in demand side then the end users uh, amount will be increased for example uh, the demand can be shifted from peak to off peak hours there we reducing the need of expensive imported fuel for example we may be using 6 to 9 residential load so the industry will be switching from 9 to uh, maybe 6 o'clock so that what happen it is operating now float so energy consumption will be less so based on that we have to manage the demand based on the demand we have to operate it next one promoting the energy efficiency in small and medium scale enterprises so under this b w implementing program some programs have been done and uh, how we can uh, uh, give the awareness among them and how can we can produce the uh, low uh, low cost and uh, high energy uh, product and high profit for the uh, energy company also based on that this will be derived so uh, for this project they might have uh, chosen for example they have uh, chosen a clusters like chemical as ahmedabad and textiles as surat 
and uh, rice milling in Warangal. So they have divided in the categories for this small scales. And also under various sector, designated consumers. So thermal power station should, should consume within this metric range. Fertilizer and cement, iron, steel should be in within the 30,000 metric ton of oil they should use per year. And uh, charcoal, uh, aluminium they should use 12,000 uh, and 7,500 metric oil equivalent per year and above. So they have given some categories and uh, they are giving some energy uh, consumption uh, rules also for such industries. And uh, they are providing, uh, they wanted in all the industries with a uh, good grade energy managers and energy auditors to analyze what is utilized, what is uh, saved and how the energy saving is done and what means. And they are doing certain aggregation, some exams are conducting for that energy managers. They are supposed to conduct the energy audit under the regulations. So what is the need of energy audit? In, in, in industries, there are two operating expenses. One is the energy, both electrical and thermal. Second one is the labor and third one is the material. So energy would emerge a top ranker and it should be reduced. As the primary objective of energy audit is to reduce the energy consumption per unit and uh, under low operating cost. So these are certain benchmark. So energy management, I think we might have studied already how to manage the energy to uh, achieve the optimum energy and to minimize energy cost, to minimize the environmental effects so what is the energy management system so first one is check or first one is the we will start from this side so first one in the technical side what is the energy management data what all the assessment is there based on the do how to do that so first one is plan next one is do energy purchasing design project verification it is done then you have to check and monitor for example you want to plan how many generators you are going to operate that we have planned then we are going to design or we are going to install the project and we are executing it then third one is once again we are checking its performance it is working good or what and if it is not working good once again we have to have one more plan it is working good it is fine we have to analyze the system performance the manager uh, aspect we can name it as plan it is based on the policy goals targets resources at 2020 or 25 what is the next plan and similarly, how to do that, to do the training, communication, control equipment. Based on that, we have to uh, do a, a program for that. Based on that, what is the problem in it? And we have to do the correct, corrective action based on the audits. Then we have to see the review meeting. Based on that, once again, if it is not executed, we have to uh, do the same thing once again. So it is a cycle. So we have types of energy auditors. Uh, there are uh, depends how it is depends so based on the function and type of industry uh, depth to which the final audit is needed and potential and magnitude of cost reduction so basically it is classified as preliminary audit targeted audit and detailed audit uh, <clears throat> so here the scope uh, scope is specific narrow wide uh, here the general potential assessment is so these are all the scales proper, properties of uh, energy audit models so they aim to propose or to point out so these are all the uh, energy audit models so in the preliminary audit so what they will do so it is just a walkthrough audit diagnosing audit they will relatively uh, check it in faster manner and it is uh, by seeing that uh, they will produce the output just by seeing. So uh, it is done on the existing only uh, exi existing and easily obtained it only. Establish the energy consumption in the organization. It estimates the scope of scaling. It identifies the uh, likely areas of attraction and no cost or low cost improvement also. It is the reference point uh, and it's do the study and ma uh, measurement. So establish the energy consumption in the organization. For example, energy bills or invoices. Obtain related data such as production of 
uh, energy consumption relation and estimate the scope of energy savings and identify most likely the easiest area of sort and that is unnecessary lighting higher temperature that and all we have to identify and we have to settle it out the detail audit based on the results we have to uh, do some homework so here it is in the two phases one is the pre phase sorry three phases one is the pre phase audit phase and post phase so it is to plan next one it has to execute then we have to find the results so based on this is the detail audit so here you can see pre audit so plan organize an interview so audit team it should organize the time frame uh, and it should be familiar with the process and uh, activities here is the first hand observation so this is a pre phase audit and we should have a meeting and uh, uh, what is the cooperation what is the awareness we have to check with that and we have some question it based on this one we have to plan for phase 2 audit here based on the primary data gathering flow and energy diagram based on the historical data we have to work it out uh, all uh, next we have to conduct the survey and monitoring so by means of motor survey insulation survey lighting survey portable instruments for that we are doing the measurements and using these equipments then conduct of detailed trials so we have to test the equipments so 24 hour 1 hour 2 hour so all day efficiency everything we have to check and analysis of energy use so how we are using the energy how we are wasting the energy that we have to analyze and identify the opportunities where we can do the corrective action to improve that you have to brainstorm it and cost benefit of it how you, you can improve the feasibility and economic viability on that and uh, prioritize low medium and long term uh, measures also in that then reporting the presentation to the top level management so what was it how we can execute it we can draft it and we can submit as a final report as a feedback the post audit implementation follow what you have given as the corrective action it should be implemented here so action plan schedule of implementation and what it so questions which an auditor can or audit should ask so what function does this system so what does this system so its function what is the energy consumption of consumption of this system what are the indications of the system working properly if the system is not working properly how can it be restored to good working condition how can the energy cost of the system can be so these are all the questions which can be asked by the auditor formally and what are the instruments used for or uh, types of instruments used in energy audit so for we told already it is based on the measurement and monitoring so that we have um, many parameters to be measured for example uh, voltage current power factor maximum demand reactive power energy consumption it is in the terms of electrical and other parameters may be temperature heat flow radiation air gas flow liquid flow rpm that is uh, rotation per minute air velocity and uh, some gas analysis also we can do so for that some equipments are preferred so this is actually lux meter so this lux meter this is actually uh, used in i think you might have seen in the cricket grounds also and the umpires sometimes in the test cricket you may be using this you will be evaluating the incident light same will be using the industry to calculate the uh, light intensity second one is the uh, psychrometer the psychrometer is uh, is a means of two thermometers actually one thermometer is the ordinary thermometer which measures the dry bulb temperature other is one which measures the wet bulb temperature so both it is used so i think you might have seen this also in laboratories next one is the smart energy meter so i think we will be studying the energy meter uh, in uh, module 5 it is a smart so here you can see what is the energy now what is the tariff what is the daily average everything will be available in the smart meters next one is thermography so based on the temperature the screen will be visible that is uh, what is the, based on the temperature the color will be different for example if it is Uh, orange or reddish orange uh, it is more uh, heat the heat will be more 
it is nothing but electromagnetic thermal imaging it is thermal imaging process so here based on the thermal energy the ir rad radiations are observed and remaining we can see find out the hot and cold spots based on this so cold means it will be blue color hot means it will be in the red color next one it is the speed measurement i think already we know and uh, this is the tachometer i think we might have used in the lab to measure the speed and this is a stroboscope so this is also used for measuring the flow of speed for example motor speed or maybe the rotation of a machine so everything we can measure by these two instruments next one is the ultrasonic flow meter so what is the flow of water in it so this can be measured by using by sending the ultrasonic waves based on that uh, signal reflection uh, doppler effect we can find the flow of the liquid so next one is a non intra non contact infrared thermometer i think this now it is used late in this covid period for measuring the temperature also same we are using for the industries for measuring the uh, levels of uh, temperature uh, based on the infrared principle then contact thermometer this is normal thing it is nothing but thermocouple so used to measure hot air and cold air in it Uh, next one is the manometer so it is uh, used to measure the pressure on the boiler or a furnace or many things and combustion gas analyzer so what are the type of gases present nox sox so what are all present that is used to measure this type of device or used and this is the firelight it is uh, used for the chemical reaction changes or oxygen or this is also type of gas analyzer an electric measuring instrument so this may be multimeter clamp meter so where we can measure kva kw pf i think this also we will study in detail in the next module which is which we are going to use in laboratories also so these are all the various uh, instruments in the previous slide now we are going to see identification of energy conservation factors and areas so where we can uh, correct the factors so here about the fuel so one, one is the electrical generation energy uh, distribution electrical energy generation electrical energy distribution and energy usage process this is quite important then fuel substitution how we are going to use the alternate fuel so here uh, why it is more because we are using uh, such common fuels that is light diesel liquid lpg lignite co so that only we are getting more and uh, the price transport that is also one more key factors and quality of the fuel contaminants will be more that's why the power cost is more so due to this reason the tariff structure is also more so for this many standards are there that is iso 9000 2008 is quality management system i think you might have seen in this and many places Uh, for example generating stations and all then iso 14001 2004 is environmental management system oh sas is nothing but occupational health and safety management system so it is also having one certificate certificate of energy audit that is 18001 then iso 22000 is for food and safety i think in your uh, chocolate and all you might have seen this trademark then iso ts 16949 2002 is nothing but quality management system for design and development of production this is actually qm quality management then iso 5001 is for uh, energy management uh, and iso 5001 slash uh, sorry i uh, call and 2011 is for energy management system so areas which will be covered under energy auditors electrical system distribution system Uh, factor study uh, capacitor performance transformer optimization cable sizing motor loading lighting system electrical heating and electric ovens so in the mechanical part it is nothing but mechanical system fans and blowers exhaust and ventilation systems pumps and pumping system compressed air system air conditioning and refrigeration system and cooling tasks so this is about the energy conservation and energy auditing which is done in detail in the industries thank you for watching